so on the nasdaq um this was basically the trade which find itself opening up today if you would like me to break that down i can i can sure. find myself with that as well that but um first of all i'm gonna start off with the dxy over here um you know and unfortunately i can't find myself doing the the uh, uh like the, the 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 fundamental talk how you guys is doing it you know i think it's pretty cool i think it's pretty cool um but yeah hopefully hopefully in the future i can find myself joining you guys on doing that and um yeah you know like i mentioned this month was basically my youtube channel's third year of trading right and one thing that i've actually noticed is that throughout this whole journey throughout these three years um the name of the game is actually like self-improvement you know um and throughout these three years the only things that i've been focused was technicals and the psychology right and i've never found myself tapping into the news events because i simply found myself being like you know what it's too hard but i mean like i also thought that the technical part was hard but you know what now we are just simply finding ourselves moving with it so yeah you know i would like to tap into the technical side of well the fundamental part of things well the cool thing uh you know too at the same time uh diego is that you know we have people that come on the show that have all different backgrounds different uh approaches you know uh so there is the cool thing there's not one right way to trade and then everything else is wrong i, I i'm a big believer in you know many different ways to find uh success and and at the same time you know your example of you like to trade specifically the nasdaq um, and the dollar index as your as your guide is uh, you know is awesome. I think that there are people who like trading currency pairs, there's people that like trading gold um, indices. But the common trait is that whatever whatever you found in your back testing and strategy planning and and experience to be best for you, um, there's no right or wrong answer. You know what I mean? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Also, that you know what, uh, this is like music as well. You know, like everyone wants to be the best trader. It's fine to be the best trader for yourself, right? Um, but to the world out there, there's always going to be someone who is better. There's going to be someone who is worse than you, right? So on this whole journey, it's just focus on your journey. This is to everyone, like in the chat whatsoever, right? Just focus on your journey and just just prove yourself um, a point at the end of the day and not to other people. No just problem. wanted to mention that we just had some news drop here, everybody who's listening. Uh, we had Consumer Confidence come out and Schultz Job Openings. We had uh, a higher than expected read on both prints. We had the Consumer Confidence come out at 100.3, higher than expected, showing the consumers feeling a little bit better. And Job Openings actually rose uh, more than uh, expected. We went from the forecast of 8.02 million. Um, they were FISE the previous one up just now, as well as reported higher than expected job openings. Um, this also shows that consumer confidence was slightly revised lower in the previous. So big summary here is that jobs data came in a little bit better than expected and consumer confidence came in uh, a little bit better than expected as well overall. So um, what we see here is the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ seeing a little bit of give back here. Dow Jones, just a slight amount. The dollar index is up. The euro is lower. You know, again, some dollar strength coming into the picture today with jobs data coming in is slightly higher. This does just paint a picture for the probabilities of a rate cut um, probably getting diminished drastically for September. There was already, I'm sorry, not September, for, for July, which was uh, not expected to see an interest rate cut this week. But this probably solidifies that there won't be a rate cut this week, but a possible one in September is still very much on the table. Uh, just wanted to, to give that overview here. Uh, NASDAQ is now moving a little bit. So from a price action standpoint, Diego, I'll let you uh, keep going from here. Just taking a look at the uh, the volatility uh, with this this jobs data coming in higher than expected. But um, yeah, news just dropped. Jobs data a little bit stronger. Uh, consumer confidence doing okay, hanging in there. And uh, markets reaction is a little bit mixed, but slightly lower for the indices. Dollar index is up with uh, that data just kind of being overall net bullish for the dollar. Wait a second. What is that out in the water? Is that a shark? Ah! Yeah, thankfully he only took half off my surfboard.
The markets can be a very scary place. Don't go wadding into treacherous waters without your edge finder, which gives you market data like the commitment of traders data, retail sentiment, our top setups algorithm, which generates ideas each day for you, and so on and so forth. If you don't already have a copy of the edge finder, we're currently doing our summer sale and it is our biggest discount of the entire year, no questions asked. If you're waiting for a better discount, you won't get it. Currently, the edge finder is half off. Check it out and uh, thank you guys for watching. Back to the show. Yeah, I, I had a little uh, daily action in the SPX uh, yesterday and today. Uh, yesterday, the trade was done by, uh, let me see what my, let me see my timestamp here. Uh, yesterday by 10.08, today by 10.01. So uh, a hey, little, little nice. daily action there in the SPX. Uh, not a lot going on as far as price movement. We've got some earnings uh, after market today that can shake things up a little bit. Microsoft advanced micro devices after earnings today. Um, things are pretty quiet. Uh, I saw that, you know, SoFi was down slightly. Pfizer, I didn't take a look at. I got an early assignment on Google. Um, I did an in the money, you know, bull put spread, bear call spread. I traded that for some cost effective uh, earnings. And uh, I was assigned early on Google at uh, hmm. 190. So uh, not a, not an issue. If I'm, I'm assigned at 190, but I have a 187 long put, 187.50. So right now, if I wanted to close out my long put and I want to take the shares, I would own the shares at 171. Okay. Um, so I considering I'm just I'm just thinking about this right now. It's like, well, I think the earnings kind of hinge on uh, what the market gives us. I mean, the reality is I can essentially wait until Thursday, Friday to take any assignment. So I, I have the shares right now. I still have my long put. Uh, I was noticing that today that I wasn't getting the extra time value in this option. So for me to just take the shares today doesn't really do me any good. So I'll just wait if price is below. Um, if price is below 170 by the end of the week, I'm actually going to make a dollar 75. Let me change the color here. Um, I'll actually make a dollar 75 on the winning side of the trade and on the ownership and the extra put. Um, it, basically, the net loss would be about a dollar. So okay. I, I don't have to take the shares. I don't have to keep the shares. But the net result is, uh, if we're below 170, uh, if we're below 170 by the end of the week, uh, then I'll make an extra. 75 cents and not take any assignment so i think i'll just sit on this for right now um as, you know count wise everyone's fine for stock buying power and it's not it's not uh an issue but um i went a little I, i'm not gonna say aggressive i just did a bunch of credit spreads here but um let me track so trades that i'm in i also got my repair trades we i think we talked about this last week nick on china i took some mm -hmm. stock on k web okay and KWeb is down, but I actually repaired uh, the stock for uh, most of my accounts. I've got one one more account in here with ownership around 24. Uh, I got 42 cents out of it, so 27 right there. So I own the shares at 24.27, and I added another covered call for this week. So this would just be a quick repair. I'm trying to min uh, minimize some of the uh, China exposure. I, there are trades that I still like that are China related. Uh, but for right now, I'm looking to get it called away. If it stays above $26 this week, I get it called away for $1.73, uh, which on you know a few hundred shares makes makes a few bucks. It's better than losing, and it's just a repair. Get rid of some of the uh, the, the the trades. Uh, and honestly, like in the stock market, this is pretty easy to do. So, you know, if anybody was interested in learning how to, you know, start out with a very simple strategy like a credit spread. Um, you know, if you have the ability to own shares, how to basically prevent losses. I mean, you can you can take a credit spread. Um, if you're willing to own the shares, it's easy to repair the stock so you don't have to take the loss. Um, I do that quite a bit. So it happens it happens to be one of my favorite strategies when it comes to, you know, either collect credit, no assignment, um, you know, take the credit, take the assignment, repair the trade, prevent the loss, uh, just increases your, your strike rates and win percentages by a lot. So sure simple stuff uh if you just know a couple things about trading some options exactly so, you how you doing man what's do what's going on and what's going on in your your portfolio today uh i've got some stuff that i'm doing i'm watching gold um it did pop back up as a possible bullish setup for me but mm -hmm. i don't love the price action it's very choppy recently i just don't i feel like i'm you know i love trading it when it's doing this right obviously who doesn't when it's when it's making nice moves and you're on the right side of it but it's been choppy and uh this this breakout here was a big one for me. I thought that was going to keep going after we broke through those highs, we fizzled out, 
I trailed out of the trades that I was in on it. So um, I am kind of on the on the sidelines with gold, but watching it, I'd love to see either a pullback to the 2300, in which case I probably take another stab. This level has been really good to me over the last you know several months. This has been a really good buying zone. So I like the idea if it does roll over. Um, and at the same time, if we break through the highs, I'll probably take a momentum trade. So I like gold long, but I need to see either momentum pickup or a discount comes into play. So uh, kind of where I'm at with gold. Um, at the same time with the indices, I'm really curious. You know, today kicks off. Uh, well, I guess not kicks off. Google really kicked it off. But today continues the question uh, that the whole stock market is wondering with the AI trade, which is, what is CapEx looking like for these big companies? Are they going to continue to, to spend heavily on the AI trade, which is also contingent on their earnings? You know, if their earnings are, you know, very good projections um, uh, going forward, then perhaps the AI trade is safe. Perhaps the, you know, the spending on semiconductors can still be strong. I personally think that it will be. Uh, I think that, you know, I was just thinking about this anecdotally this morning, Chris. I was going around and playing around with AI because I had I, I wanted I wanted AI to read an article for me and give me a summary this morning. That was the setup. Then I tried like four different AI different things to get to just see which one gave me the best answers. I used Twitter's Grok, I used Gemini from Google, I used ChatGPT, and I said, you know, I paused as I was as I was doing this and I thought to myself, wait a second, none of them can stop spending because the best one is where everybody's gonna go. And they all know that, especially Google, whose search uh, business still makes up a huge component to what they do. Um, so I think, you know, spending is supported. I still I'm staying with the tech trade, as I've, I've mentioned, for better or for worse. I might be very wrong about this and these prices are too high, um, but I don't quite see the uh, the rollover effect just yet. So. We'll see, though. This is where the rubber meets the road, because if by the end of the week we see just kind of disappointment from all the big techs that come out, you know, today we have Microsoft and AMD, as you mentioned. Tomorrow we have Meta and Thursday we have Amazon and Apple. You have all these big tech companies reporting. My thought process is, is I'm going to be long. I'm going to I'm going to assume these companies are innocent until proven guilty. That's the current trend. That's the, the prevailing theme of this year. So I'm going into earnings season with that as my base case. But if I get surprised to the downside, um, I've got to admit I was you know, on the wrong side of that and perhaps the trend has truly changed. But I think this week is the defining factor of whether or not this is just a pullback and a wonderful buying opportunity for the rest of the year right. or if this is the start of a bigger turnaround theme for the second half and i'm not loyal to i'm loyal to the you know to the the profits first right so if something breaks this week i'll probably sound very different next week but uh we'll see i'm i'm not you know the old expression i always say on the channel is um hold uh, hold loosely to strong opinions and that's kind of where i'm at with it <laughs> yeah it's it's very true it would be i mean let's we're, we're it's end of july right we've got the fed this week also don't forget about that with powell mm -hmm. uh, dropping some comments and the likelihood of the fed rate cut um in september um i still think you know according to the cme watch tool the fed's likely looking at three cuts by the end of the year um the, you know what's what's funny nick is if the fed cuts three times so this would be september november december that's actually what they said at the beginning of the year wow yeah, so that, look at look at what we have done as like you know we're analyzing what's the fed going to do and we thought it was six or seven and then it's one and it's zero it's like the fed actually said like three cuts well and it's kind <laughs> of like you know chris when uh when somebody gets really good at sports betting what do the casinos do they hire them to write the betting lines yeah with the fed when people are incredibly good at economics and and trying to project something that is very very hard to project the Fed hires them. You know, you got brilliant minds working at the Fed. So, sure. um, you know, the market is is all about, you know, there's there's a dynamic that the Fed doesn't quite get, which is the, you know, the uh, the absolute emotion that comes with the stock market, which can drive prices by itself. That's a different component that I think traders hone in on. Fed officials focus heavily on the economic data. Traders try and do that, but also hone in on momentum and enthusiasm and the AI theme and you know, there's trading. That's why I think trading is different than being being a good trader. It's not necessarily being an economist. An economist does not equal being good trader, right? There's some differences there.
Yeah, we have. Um, well, I mean, the rotation. Look, look th there's a lot going on this week. There's you know 900 plus companies with earnings plus the Fed end of the month kicking off a new month. Uh, the 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 data pause right now is going to be Jackson Hole is August. That's about all we really have is we have earnings season and we have Jackson Hole in August. Yep. Um, if we're looking at this rotation, I mean, look, it's going to be odd to see the Mag Seven underperform and somehow see like the Russell do well. Um, I know a lot of traders right now are probably talking a lot about the Japanese yen. Uh, I think the Japanese yen is pretty straightforward. Um, I said this week, a couple things to watch for. So let's just take a quick glance at the yen crosses here. Um, you know, we had this this giant drop, but most of the yen pairs moved between 900 and 1,000 plus pips uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, looking at the currency strength today, it wasn't a huge surprise that we saw weakness in the yen, at least in the short term. Uh, volatility is kind of expanding a little bit, um, but there's a lot to be said. The BOJ is tonight, by the way. So tonight to tomorrow, what's the Bank of Japan going to do? Anything? Is it still the same old, same old? Um, I, I said that, you know, my look on the Japanese yen right now is it does appear to be doing some, you know, pretty severe damage to like this uptrend and putting this carry trade in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. But would anybody be surprised if after this sell off from a high to a low, let me change the color here, uh, from a high to a low, would anyone be surprised to see just the pull, the pullback, like a, you know, 30 to 50% pullback? I wouldn't be surprised to see that in the short term. Um, I know that typically when the yen is unraveling and this carry trade is going to, you know, dissipate that it's bare flags. So, I mean, if we go from here, with a pause and we go lower, I mean, I, I've seen this on your charts too, Nick. I mean, if we're breaking this Aussie N trend line, you know, any type of pullback, I'm gonna take some stabs at trying to short. Now, we've yeah. talked about this a month ago. You know, I'm not trading a lot of Japanese yen right now because every single day I get charged to hold that. So yep. what I'm holding is I'm holding FXY, yep. which is an ETF that trades the Japanese yen. And I'm also looking at the futures market for forward slash 6J. Uh, those are positions that you don't get charged negative swap. You just trade the direction. So FXY, if I'm bullish, I want to see stronger yen with that. Um, 6J, if I'm bullish on, on the yen, I would trade that long in a, in a futures contract. So uh, those are probably the ways that I will be trading if I'm more confident we have a direction. I think right now, you know, look, I didn't participate in this at all outside of having my FXY long and I'm break even. Like I yeah. was in a, a, a tiny yeah. little drawdown on break even. Just to um, show how difficult the timing is with that. I mean, but yeah. to your point though, you know, with, with FXY, with the yen, um, going back to my theme with the NASDAQ. Uh, so this week, if, if earnings are, if earnings are very disappointing, if earnings outlooks are disappointing, uh, or, you know, spending for the, the AI trade is drying up. Investors are concerned. If we get some super bearish stuff, it's probably tied to the yen too, because if that changes global sentiment to be like, well, you know, um, spending's drying up, earnings are, are drying up. Maybe the risk on party is a bit over. That's going to turn into probably, I would argue, more, uh, you know, favoritism for the yen, selling other currencies in favor of the yen. But um, you're making a bet that, you know, the global economy will will kind of cool off or maybe even slow recessionary, in which case the yen could be dramatic. So if we see, you know, this by end of week, earnings are awful and um, maybe the Fed is, is, you know, comes out more hawkish than expected. If we get that theme, the yen could look really strong uh, as a alternative to, you know, all this market sphere. So we'll see. Yeah, it, well... I, I'm just first half of the year was strong. Second half of the year, momentum probability is strong. Um, I'm and like you said, I'm sticking with that narrative right now. And that there's a lot of noise the market delivers. Um, I'm look, I'm happy in a way, in a way, I'm happy we're getting pullbacks because you know we were having the same conversation when the when this that was weird uh, when the spy was sitting here overstretched and we're hitting all time highs. We've got six all time highs in a row. I mean, we're saying it's like, is this going to pull back? But now we have, right? And, and now look yep. at how quick the narrative shifts of like, now we get a pullback and we're questioning the entire market. Yeah, like, can we sustain even, these highs yeah. and are we going to get back to those highs? And yeah. it's even, 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 you know, you and I that understand like, look, pullbacks should happen. And it's just funny, like how much 
data gets dumped into like why we dropped five percent in the spy why did we drop nine almost ten percent in the queues right. um because now it's like well you know it's because it's highly concentrated and there's only seven stocks that have been doing it now if they start to show weaker earnings it's going to drag everything down this yeah. is the house the of narrative can shift about. so quickly yeah. i do think that it's you know there it's due for for a pullback and, and honestly could be due for a bigger correction will that be now or later we'll see i mean really this week is a big uh make or break it week because if you get yeah. earnings that come in really strong the ai trade might resume and if earnings come in in any way weak uh this could very quickly turn from a five percent pullback in the s p 500 to a ten percent sure. um you know and then and then you really get the the questions of is this thing you know completely rolled over my personal bias is I lean a little bit more on the this thing is innocent till proven guilty. I don't see the the you know the catalyst just yet for 10% uh, plus on the S&P 500. But again, uh, keeping an open mind. If earnings are bad this week, I will be in that camp. I will be in the okay, probably 10%. If earnings yeah. are bad, uh, the problem is from my positioning perspective. By then, I will have already missed it. But I'm willing to miss it because my bias generally leans. I think that. You know, tech companies are gonna they're gonna hit it as they have for a long time. This year's been really strong. Um, we have rate cut optimism that's kind of pieced in there. So we'll see. But if I need to adjust, I will adjust, and uh, that's that's kind of where I lean. Um, at the same time, you got gold pushing higher. Silver's making a little bit of recovery. Silver's been getting crushed, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, recently with the same thing with copper has been another one to watch. Uh, copper futures just getting pummeled here. So yep. um, really interesting to see that 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 goes against, you know, this this I think has a lot of uh, in in tandem with the yen, right? The yen strength um, is that idea that maybe the global economy is slowing more than than what we think. Maybe this thing turns into, you know, more of a, a, a secular like slowdown in the global economy. And maybe that's why copper is lower. That's why the yen is higher. And maybe that's why stocks are down. Did you know we do a live trading show Monday through Friday with guests from all over the world? To get notified when we go live, click the bell button next to the subscribe button or check in at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have helpful free content in the description below and on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you tomorrow.